Hello and welcome back to our third tutorial on glass where we'll be exploring in some detail caustics and how to set them up. Now we looked at this previously in the Cornell box but let's just have a look at it with something slightly more interesting. Um, this torus knot. Okay, um, so caustics, what are they? They're basically specular rays which are focused. They're either focused by reflection or by refraction. So they, they form sharp light patterns. Um, basically, effects of caustics can be seen in, um, say, the bottom of a swimming pool, or if you were to leave a gold ring on a table, you'd see that the light is actually focused from the reflection of the circle into interesting patterns. So it's a, a real physical, real world effect. And with physically plausible lighting, we want to actually get some of that going on here in the scene. What do we need to do to actually get caustics working in the scene? There are a few things, all of them need to be done, and I have done them all wrong at one time or another, so here's how we make sure that things work. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we have, on our materials, these extra render man attributes. Now, I'll get rid of this and I'll bring it back again. So attributes, render man, remove caustic controls, attributes, render man, add caustic controls. Now, this is our, um, our plain material here, so I want the caustic to be set to matte. Now the reason why we actually have to have caustic controls on this is because this material needs to know to receive caustics. Again on our glass material here we need to have extra random attributes and it will be the caustic controls here and it's set to glass which is what we'd expect. So in other words this will actually allow caustics to move through it. We need a light source. So I'm going to put in a simple light source, which is um, an area light. Okay, and I'm going to move it up. Oops. Let me just move this up here. And I'm going to look through it. Just to get it in a decent location. Look through it selected. Okay, and I want to be looking through it, say, roughly over here. Okay, just looking through it like that, and panels go back to our standard perspective. So we'll be seeing some light traveling from this through this. Okay, now what else do we need to have set up? Well, first of all, in our scene, we want to make sure we have ray tracing on. And in my case, I want to make sure I want to have quality set to um, five at the moment, which will be fine. So it'll be quick. And let's just do a quick render. So let's render this. So standard glass material, similar to the previous. Okay, incredibly dark, what we're expecting. Increase our intensity here to, I think six should probably work here. Let's go back to image tool and try re-render. Okay, we're getting something happening, not too bad. Let's go closer to where we are in here and tell image tool to always be on top, re-render. Okay, it's noisy as hell at the moment because we actually have our sampling set to, to five. Re-render again. And I could probably push this up to eight. Ah, we're gonna go up to nine. Okay, this is me just checking the, the light settings. Okay, so currently with this glass material, I haven't got anything else strange set up. With the shadows, I have the shadows set to opaque, which is fast. Now this makes it easier for me to see in actual fact when I get um, some caustics working. In order to get caustics working, I need to actually go into Hypershade. This is my Hypershade panel here, okay? and I need to actually create a caustic light. This is the only place where it's currently available. So I'm going to make a caustic light, which basically calls up to Renderman and tells it that there will be caustic rays in the scene. That's one of the, that's the second thing which is important to do. We need to have a caustic light in the scene. The third thing we need to do is under our Renderman controls, Renderman controls window, okay. We need to actually have in our final pass, okay, so these are our final outputs. We need to set a file for the output, 
we need to say put some rays in here how many photons we want 10,000 to 100,000 will get us something and call the caustic um, map class give it a name okay and now let's see how this renders let's re-render so we can see now we're actually getting caustic rays in the scene things to do in the material we need to set extra attributes in the material which caustic rays will land on we need to set extra attributes we need to set up in our renderer a file for these um, caustic maps to be actually read out to and say how many photons we want I'm going to actually increase a factor of 10 and what I'm going to do now is going to go back to our final settings and increase the quality here to 1 and just do a re-render here and we'll see the results so there's a number of things which have to be done to actually get caustics happening and again with this I have the shadowing set to opaque if I go to a more correct lighting model we will still be getting caustics and um, we'll actually be getting more correct light transference through the um, through the medium of the glass let me go to shadows here and set the view dependent this may take slightly longer re-render I will pause for you here okay um, I'm going to just tweak a few settings here I'm going to actually make um, the shadow slightly darker and I'm going to increase the internal reflections here to actually get some better looking um, reflections within the object so just one second I'm going to come back to you okay you should know how to make those settings yourself but just in case you don't what I've done is I've set my internal reflection limit to 5 I've set my max spec depth to 6 and I've dropped my darkness here to 8 let's just try re-rendering this it'll take us a couple seconds get nicer interactions here and the rays connect through the object okay getting nice edge darkness. Now the darkening which we get here in Extrafax is because of the Fresnel effect. At a glancing angle, light tends to be reflected rather than passing through the object. And we're getting some very nice specular here. So that's it at the moment for glass. Um, I really love this material. I think it's so elegant the way in which it's set up. And I hope you enjoy it and um, make some good glass objects with it. So thank you very much. And I will be back shortly with some more tutorials.